This tutorial is sponsored by EnvironmentTextures.com, high quality images for 3D artists and game developers. Okay, so here we are in step two. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a longer step than the last one. We've got a bit more to do. Uh, and now we're going to start making the, the high polygon version of the barrel. So we're going to start by building it out of planks. So our first plank is going to be a cube. Um, and at this stage, it's just occurred to me that it's a good idea to move that back out of the way. So I'll do that. And then I'm going to start just shaping myself something that looks plank-like. So something like that. Yep, right. I'm just going to try and get it to a height that I'm pretty happy with. Uh, yeah, and what I really want to do, just to make my life easier, uh, especially if I was importing this into um, a game engine like Unreal, I want to try and line the bottom up with um, the grid, just so I know where that's going to be. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, but I actually want the um, the plank to be on this side, and that's so that I can line up the bend later. So what I'm going to do is rotate it around so that it's not facing that direction. So let's get the rotate tool on. I'll begin moving that around and then my channel box, I'll notice that I have been rotating it on Y, so I'll call that 90 degrees. Lovely. And then I'm going to hold my D key. In fact, I'm going to put my move tool on first. Hold my D key and then hold my V key, which will snap to vertex, and that will just drop my pivot to the bottom of the plank, which I want to do. And then I'm just going to move this out to the edge, like that. And then what I need to do is bring that pivot back into the center. So now I'm going to hold D, and I'm going to also hold X on the keyboard. X will snap to grid, grid points. And I'm just going to put that pivot bang in the center of the grid. So I'll try and show you that as best I can. You can see the pivot is now there. And what that does is if I was to rotate this, now that I've moved the pivot point, it goes around the center. I'm going to use that to create the, the outline of the barrel. Okay, so now what we need to do is duplicate this first plank that we've got um, so that it creates um, a, a full radius, a full roundy barrel-y thing. Uh, so the way I'm going to do that is uh, by using duplicate special and I'm going to create 15 copies that'll give me 16 in total which is a nice uh, a nice round number for this uh, and I'm going to instance them instead of creating straight duplicates which means that if I change one uh, ideally the original in fact let's rename that to plank so that I know which one the original is uh, so if I with instancing, if I change the original, it will change all of the others, which means that I can continue to edit even though I've got copies. But you'll see what I mean. So if we go for edit, duplicate special. Right, here's my duplicate box. I'm just going to go to reset settings. So we've got a, uh, like a, a brand new duplicate special tool. So you're looking at the same as I'm looking at. So I want instance on there. And I'm going to rotate each copy 22.5 degrees on the y-axis uh, and if you do your maths I think 22.5 is what happens if you take 360 and divide it by 16 and I want 15 copies so if I now click on duplicate special you will see that that creates that amazingness which is what I wanted so I can make changes to this but what I can't do is just scale it. With instancing, for some reason, it doesn't like that. It won't be copied on the others. Um, so what we'll do is we'll put it into vertex mode, select all the vertices, and using uh, the scale tool, we'll just scale it out like that. And you'll see that's being matched by all of the others. I'm not going to push it out all the way yet. I'm just doing it to get it to get it quite close. Uh, I don't need it to be 100%. We'll, we'll refine that later. But it's just to give us a, a much nicer looking uh, circumference is that the right word that's what I'm going with so you can see that's still plank so I know that that's my original the others are named appropriately plank one plank two whatever so I need to do a little bit more work on plank one to get this looking more barrel like so the first thing I'll do is I'll bevel 
this plank. So I'm going to open my modeling toolkit for this, which lives up here. And if I scroll down, there's my bevel operation. And I'm going to go 0 0.1 for the fraction. And I'm going to have two segments, I think. Uh, and that just gives a nice smoother edge on each of the planks, which is what I like. The next thing I want to do is get that bend, that, that bend there. So the way I'll do that is first of all, I'm going to need some extra edge loops. So my current favorite way of adding edge loops is something I learned from Mike Hermes. If you haven't checked out his channel, MH Tutorials, I think it is. It's worth a look. It's very good. Um, he starts all his videos with, hi guys, welcome back to my channel, which I like. He's got a cracking little accent, that guy. Um, so we need to use this, this tool. So insert edge loop tool, click on your options box. You'll probably start on relative distance from edge. Go to multiple edge loops and we want five. So we'll type five in that box. Okay, and then to get five edge loops on the height, you have to click on one of the, the edges that's running up and down. So like that, and you'll see that it places edge loops one, two, three, four, five, and they're equidistant, equal distance from each other, and that's wonderful. And that sets us up to be able to bend this plank. So I'm now going to go back into object mode and select my original plank just go into the channel box to make sure that's what I've got and now I'm going to apply a bend deformer so that lives in this little menu here deform if you click on this and you look for nonlinear the first option there is bend and by default it should be facing the right way so we'll click on this and hope it works so that's applied the bend deformer we need to go into the attribute editor to find in fact, we could probably do it from there, but I, I like it from the attribute editor. If we go to bend one, you can see there's a curvature slider. And that, whilst it looks amazing, is not what I'm looking for. Okay, so if you find that um, your bend is going in the wrong direction, this is not useful to us at all. Um, the way to change it is if you go to your bend handle tab, and have a look at your rotate and I can see here um, I've got 90 on uh, saved here so I'm just going to put that back to zero and that should sort it you can see now that's that's bending outwards so I've got a good idea of how that should look so now I'm going to go back into my front view and I'm going to try and match up the curvature of the barrel so let's bend this in a little bit I think I might just go in slightly more than that. Yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. So that's a, a nice even bend. So you can see that the bend on this barrel is actually not consistent. Uh, but I, I want mine to be consistent. So I'm happy with that. So let's have a look. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. So we can now say that we've got a nice barrelly shape. So next thing we need to do is uh, do a little bit of tidying up. On, on this plank to make sure that they all sort of mesh together nicely. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to go into our vertex mode. And I'm just going to select the vertex at the top, put my scale tool on, and just bring these in. I'm gonna to have to do this a few at a time, I think. You can see, I'm quite happy with that one, but these ones aren't quite right. So I'm just gonna correct this as well like that and it should it should only really matter on these front ones that they line up uh, because we're, we're only going to be able to see those we're not going to be, be able to see the outside ones so I just need to take care to get these lined up to where I like them and I, I'm trying to get a bit of a gap uh, I don't want them to match up perfectly because there's no point doing the planks if that happens I want to be able to get a bit of detail on on my normal map so I don't want them to go quite through each other so let's have a look at this, ping that out. Yep, okay, what does this one need to do? In or out? Now like that. And okay, and the position of the vertices do matter on this one because this can be seen on the normal map. That wasn't a very good selection, there we go. 
and then just get this one right as well. Let's put this into object mode, see if I'm happy with it. So that's okay. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Have a look at the top. Yeah, so there's a little gap in between, um, but all in all, it comes together quite nicely, which I like. Okay, at this stage, I'm pretty much happy that I'm done with that bend modifier. So what I'll do is I'll select that uh, that one plank that's got it applied. I'll go to Edit, Delete by Type, History, and that will just make that that bend permanent. That's now part of the the mesh, uh, and the deformer's gone now. So that's all nice and neat. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is create another set of planks for a lid. So that's just going to be another cube. So I'll just create one. I'll bring this up. And I just need to size this out. So it just needs to just intersect my geometry there. And I want a bit of width on it. Maybe slightly wider than the planks that make up the outer side of the barrel. And I think just to stop things from looking too uniform, I'm going to offset it slightly as well. Like that. And then if I go into vertex mode, I can see that I've created a little problem for myself. So I'll just correct that, push that back inside. And I'll have the same issue at the top. So get hold of that, push it back in. Oh, yes, mate. Okay. So now I'm just going to put this back into object mode. This needs a bevel on it so that we're getting a bit of extra detail. So let's go back into modeling toolkit. Drop a bevel on that. I definitely want two segments. And let's try 0.2. Am I happy with that? Yeah, 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Yes. Okay. So now what I need to do is duplicate this a few times so that it so that it works. So I want to get in nice and close on this just to make sure that they're meeting. That's nice. And I'm going to do Shift and D to get another one. Obviously, I need to correct those a little bit. Okay, I'm going to get these two and duplicate them and bring them this way. And then as long as I can get this meeting up nicely, I'll be happy. Yeah, about there. Okay, and now what I need to do is just sort the vertices out on these. So let's scale them in, make sure that they're not protruding at all, and get these verts as well. So they definitely need to come in. Uh, these two here need to go right in over here. Oh, I didn't get them all. Try again, chain. There we go. Bring these in. And then just scale them so that they are not sticking out. So I'm happy with that side. And then vertex. Get these bad boys. Chuck them inside. Get these verts here. Get those inside as well. And these bad boys out here need to be moved in and scaled in. Champion. Okay. Let's just investigate. Oh, what are you doing? There we go. Right. Oh, that's handsome, isn't it? Look at that beautifulness. Okay. So now what I need to do, I've got that and I'm happy with it, but I need to duplicate it because there's no shape on the bottom. So let's just bring that down and when nothing's sticking out about there, that should be good. That suggests that I didn't position those verts very well. Object mode. Okay, and am I happy with all these? These ones look all right. Yeah. Okay. So that is pretty much all the the wooden high poly geometry done. The next thing we need to do is add the metallic band. 
Right, so the next shape we're going to need in order to do this is this one, polygon pipe, and I'm going to scale it up so I can see what I'm doing. Maybe that's a bit big. Uh, and I'm going to go into the inputs for this shape, poly pipe one, and the thickness needs to be brought down. The height obviously needs to be brought under control. And then what I'm going to do is just come into this view here and try and get this into a position that I'm happy with. So I think somewhere like that I might end up being happy with. And I'm just going to size that down. move it up a little bit more okay let's just go back out into this view and see if I'm happy with that yeah we am actually so um, let's turn the grid off it's getting in my way so from this sort of view I think that looks okay but from the bottom it really doesn't so in order to sort that I'm gonna get the faces on the bottom and just uh, so I clicked once then I held shift and double clicked on the one next to it and that selected the, the whole edge loop for me and then I'm going to try and scale these in a bit just to try and keep that consistent. So I'm happy with that one. What I'll do next is I'll duplicate this one. And I'm going to move it up to the top. Now obviously that's not oriented the right way. So I want to flip this on the Y axis. And the way to do that is scale Y needs to be inverted. So you can see it's set to 1.857. If I put a minus in there, that flips it around. It just turns it upside down. It's an amazing little trick. I loves it. Okay, so I'm going to pop that one about there. Do they look about even? Yeah, so I'm happy with those two. What I need to do next is select this one. And I'm going to duplicate it bring it down to be sort of in line with the next place it needs to be and scale it out. And I'm going to change the height on it as well. So that it looks like a similar height to the previous one. And let's see if I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. That's fantabulous. Okay, so I'll duplicate this one more time to bring down to where the last metal band will be. Okay, I'm going to invert the height on the wire scale. So at the moment it's minus 1.5. So I'm gonna get rid of that minus and that'll flip it around. And then that should be good. So what I'm gonna do now, because it's getting a little bit difficult to see, I'm gonna use this here, which is a wireframe unshaded, which will just help me to see where things are. Yep, that's looking okay. I'm just going to turn that off. Okay, so what I need to do now is bevel these just so that um, the edges aren't too hard. So let's get these outside edges. So that one and that one. We'll bevel them and I definitely want two segments again. I shouldn't need any more than that. And the fraction, let's do this by eye. I think 0.2 is nice. So I'll repeat that for the other ones. So there's this one. I need to get um, that edge and that edge. Bevel, two segments, 0 0.2. Next one, come on mate, get in edge mode. Right, that one, that one. Uh, bevel, bevel them up good, Not point 0.2. And two segments. And there's only one more left to do. This one. Uh, let's bevel it. Ah, no. What am I doing? The edges. Bevel the edges, Shing. Ooh. That one. That one. Yeah. Bevel. 0 0.2. And two sections. Okay. Let's put that back into object mode. Right. At this stage, we can call the high poly done. I'm happy with that. That's cracking. So, what I'll do now is select 
the whole thing. I'm then going to combine it into one mesh, mesh combine. And I'm going to rename that to high underscore poly underscore barrel. Okay, so that's brilliant, that's finished. What we'll do in the next step will be, we'll spend some time retopologizing. I think I'm saying that right. So we will create a new barrel from scratch, um, but it will be much lower polygon. We'll have no bevels on it. We'll have no kind of additional geometry. We're just gonna try and match it as closely as we can to this high poly version uh, so that we can take the detail from this one using normal matte baking and put it onto the low polygon one, which should be good. So I look forward to seeing you in that next step.